Hey, how's it going everyone? Mick here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a very quick one for you. A very quick um, tutorial video. Um, how to remotely turn on your PC. Um, this is very useful for, for remoting into, say, your desktop. Um, maybe you've, you want to remote into your, your work computer or something, um, but you don't want to necessarily have to leave that computer on. 24 7 until you're ready to remote into it um, so from that aspect it can be very very useful um, I'm going to be doing this today to my retro gaming server which is downstairs in the cupboard under the stairs um, it's something that I like to remote into whenever I want to play um, some retro games upscaled to 1080p and 4k um, on say my living room TV my bedroom TV or my computer or my laptop um, it's one central place that I can access anywhere and get a really good gaming experience. Obviously, I don't want to leave that server on 24-7 in order for me to be able to remote into it. And I don't want to have to necessarily always go downstairs into that, uh, into that cupboard and switch it on um, via the physical switch. So today we're going to be um, using a smart relay switch. This is a... Uh, a one channel smart relay switch um, this is your Wi-Fi chip here this is your uh, your switch relay um, and all it is basically you've got uh, USB power as well to power the device um, and all it is is basically a Wi-Fi smart switch where you insert a couple wires into the relay you then plug it into the power switch motherboard header on your motherboard and then you um, download the EWE Link app uh, in order to control this. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to be showing you the uh, the wire up process um, on a dummy motherboard because it's going to be quite tight and space to film down there. Um, but it's going to be the exact same process, whatever. So what you need to do is obviously you need one of these uh, Wi-Fi relay switches. This one was about fifteen pounds off of uh, Amazon. Most of them will work. Uh, the main feature you need to be aware of is to make sure that you have one that can do momentary switches. Um, what that means is, is that when you activate the relay switch, it will turn on and then turn back off automatically after, say, half a second. I think you can actually program how long the momentary switch is for because you don't want to just do a long press on a power button because all that's going to do is power on, power off. This is just your standard power switch cable um, from, I got this one from Amazon, it was like a pack of two, and it, and it had a push switch on the end of it for about, it was about four pounds for two. Um, I just snipped off the end, the, the switch at the end, and um, what I've done is I've stripped the cable using my side cutters, um, and just what I did was, because this cable is quite thin, I just tipped the end of the uh, of the uh, wires with solder, and um, so now the the wires are nice and um, nice and they feel a lot stronger. They're not going to fray up, fray apart, etc. Um, obviously, this has to be placed somewhere, and obviously all the PCB is all bare. Um, I will say that the uh, all the uh, the solder joints on the bottom came quite sharp. So I again took my side cutters and I just. Um, I trimmed all of the uh, all of the solder joints on the bottom there to make sure that it's not potentially gonna gonna be shorting on anything in the case. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some some uh, Velcro as the bottom, and then obviously it's gonna create a little bit of a gap so that I can um, stick it somewhere inside my PC server case. Um, and it won't be in any contact with any other wires or any other PCB, etc. Probably won't need to use the electrical tape, but it's there in case you wanna electrical tape the uh, the ends here. So what we need to do um, on this smart smart relay switch, you've got these three contact pads where you've got a uh, a flathead screwdriver in order to uh, to tighten them up and loosen it off. On the bottom, you've got your your po your polarity. So you've got your um, you've got your normally open, your common, and your normally normally closed. Now, for a momentary switch, you want to use the common and the normally open. 
therefore the circuit is normally open and then you switch and then obviously it closes that circuit, creates the contact, does the switch, but then obviously because we're using the momentary function of it, it's then gonna open up the circuit again so that the contact stops. Um, so that's what we wanna do. We wanna use this one and this one. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our flathead and loosen off those two sections. And we're gonna take our um, power cable for our motherboard. And um, these aren't, they're not, it doesn't matter which side you use on which. So I'm just gonna do So here we go, as you can see on the bottom, we're using the normally open and the common contacts of this switch. So there's that. Now, one thing I did forget to put on the table here is obviously you can either power it through these connections here, um, which you can use uh, AC uh, or DC, seven to 32 volts. Um, I won't be using that just because it's, we've got a very handy uh, U micro USB here. So I'm just gonna use a micro USB USB uh, cable and then I'll either put it straight into the back of the uh, of the motherboard on the uh, on the PC because some motherboards will actually as long as it's in standby it will provide power to some of the USB ports um, I'm not too sure if my motherboard supports it because it's in it's a Chinese x99 board so I'm not too sure um, but I will check that if not I'll just use a three pin plug and I'll just have it come out because it's in a server rack anyway it doesn't need to look particularly particularly neat that's pretty much it um if you wanted to use this in your pc case and still wanted to use the functionality of your physical switch i'd use a uh, a y connector to connect this side along with your other pc uh, power switch connector and then you can go into the motherboard uh, and both cables come off one cable or you can do some soldering um, if you want to do that because I'm only ever going to be using that server when there's Wi-Fi available, I'll always be turning it on via this, so I don't need to modify anything else. I don't need to use the physical switch on that server. And the polarity doesn't matter either, so all you've got to do is then place that in there, and then it's ready to be used obviously providing that you plug in USB power to it, um, and then you download the app. So I've just installed the Wi-Fi relay uh, into the server downstairs in the, um, in the little cupboard under the stairs. And um, yeah, so as you can see now, um, on my uh, laptop, on the MacBook Pro, I've got Parsec open. Um, as you can see, I've got my PC, which is this machine here. It's not the server. The server's currently switched off. And then I've got um, the good thing about M1 based Macs is that you can actually download I, I, iOS and iPadOS apps. Um, so this is the app used to pair the device um, and to control the, uh, the, the relay. Um, what we'll do is um, I will power on by clicking that. It does a momentary switch to switch back off because it only needs to be pushed. Um, and whilst that's booting up, because it takes a little while because it's an X99 board and it power cycles after doing some checks, um, I'll just talk about the pairing process because it was one of the challenging points of this smart relay. The, um, the pairing process, the normal process, it doesn't, it doesn't like to find the device. What I had to do was I had to put it into compatibility mode, which is where you hold down the match button on the board um, until the LED starts flashing non-stop. Um, and then you connect to the device itself via your Wi-Fi settings on your uh, phone. And then you uh, go back to the app and press next. And then it uh, automatically goes through the configuration and stuff, etc. Um, it's really cool. You can set up inching, which is basically the same thing as doing a momentary switch, um, except if you don't want to have it on that mode, 
you can have it off of that mode, but you can set the inching so that it will automatically do it for you via software anyway. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, um, it's just uh, booted up all the way. Uh, you've got your Hyper-V server here. Um, I used to run Hyper-V and a couple VMs on this machine. Um, but as you can see here, I've now got my LaunchBox server, which I use LaunchBox as a front end for all of my systems. Um, and yeah, I love doing this method uh, to play my retro games because it means I can access it anywhere. It's one machine that I can access in any room of the house and out of the house as well via my laptop or whatever. Um, one local place to save games, one local place to store configurations. And because it's running um, some moderately decent specs, I can upscale all of my games to 1080p as well. So yeah, this is how I love to play like my old Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider um, PlayStation games, etc. Um, it's a fantastic way to play and now that I've got the Smart Relay installed it means that I can power on the PC wherever I am without the need of leaving the server on in case I want to play it which from a power consumption point of view is really really good especially with how energy prices are right now uh, in the UK um, our energy company went bust uh, we were with People's Energy, they recently went bust, we've been moved over to British Gas, but we are on a variable rate, and our rate is almost double what it was previously uh, because of that. So power consumption for me uh, at the moment is very much one of my top priorities, as I talk about that whilst having a PC pointlessly on with an LED behind it. But yeah, that's just me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Um, I hope this inspires you to, to do some smart automation stuff with your PCs. It doesn't have to be your, your, your computers that you do this for. You can do it for a whole wide range of devices. Um, just like I say, make sure that you get a switch that's, uh, that supports that momentary style of switching uh, or that inching uh, based uh, switch. So yeah, I've been Mick from All About Tech. Uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys out in the next video. Peace.